Good morning. Thank you for getting me set up. I'm Laura Cleveland, and I'm a patient advocate research. Um, I uh, came to this avocation um, from an education background when I was diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, um, gosh, almost 17 years ago. I was pregnant with my now 16-year-old son. So, so what do research advocates do? I didn't purposely make this all small, but um, I just wanted to, to show you. Uh, please don't even try to read it. I just want to show you some of the, ap the activities that patient advocates and research are um, involved in. Everything from, uh, I currently serve on the uh, NCI CIRB right now. I'm involved with the cooperative groups. I'm involved on a local level with our local um, academic cancer center. Um, all kinds of things that have happened through the last 10 years in my, um, my experience. But the cool thing is, is that until uh, about three weeks ago, I didn't realize that I was also Laura Cleveland, citizen science, scientist. So um, when Charlize called me and asked if I'd like to participate in this meeting, I had to tell her I'm not exactly sure what a citizen scientist was. This is a term that in my circle of, uh, of patient advocates and research, is not a, it's not a term that is, is well known. But I'm excited to bring that back to them and to share with them what exactly it is that um, we're trying to incorporate here. So at the end of the day, we're talking about what it is we want to share with our communities at the end of the day, as far as ELSI goes, as far as research goes. Um, so what? So I want to kind of clarify what it is that um, patient advocates do, um, what we are and what we are not. Um, in the scientific world, uh-oh, um, that we are peers um, with our, um, and, and I'm talking mostly in terms of um, researchers who are in the academic field. Um, we are peers with them, but we're not necessarily colleagues. And in that, I mean that we are not the person who's going to um, step on their toes uh, or be in conflict with them as somebody who is also in the academic world and um, can um, ruin relationships or disrupt relationships, especially in academia. That we're collaborators, we're not necessarily killjoys, that we bring to the table um, different ways of doing things, um, but not necessarily as, oh, we can't do this because. So we want to collaborate. We're the independent voice. This kind of goes with not being a colleague. Um, we are a voice at the table, and this is where I think we can really, with the NIH and with ELSI, um, really incorporate that independent voice that says, hey, wait a minute, can we try this? Can we do this? Can we figure out a different way of doing um, something that's not typically done right now? Um, we've. Uh, I've observed and have friends who have changed um, protocols um, in the way that certain agents are delivered in the cancer community um, just by asking a simple question. Can we do with a lesser dose? Can we do with um, less visits, less um, bone marrow biopsies, um, more of something else? And we're a voice for the patient community. Um, yesterday, I think Deb um, Collier talked about, we are not self-seekers. We're not just there to present my own case, our own case. You know, I have this, this disease, and I want this, this, this kind of uh, treatment for that. 
we speak for the entire patient community. So practical applications for the NIH community, for citizen scientists, it's not about just the research, it's about people, especially when we're talking about health outcomes. And what the research means to individuals and their families at the end of the day. Study summaries, in addition um, to consent, and I'm talking about study summaries at the beginning of um, when you're presenting somebody a consent form, having a study summary that talks about what it is in lay language, what they're going to be doing, instead of the 20-page consent form that, you know, I, I believe that people are already um, impaired when they hear the word cancer. They're impaired when they walk into a room with the white coats and um, have to make these decisions with their families about whether they're going to participate in research or not. Um, so how do we get the word out about study summaries, about clinical trials? How do we protect our communities, um, whether that community be a, a group of patients with a certain disease, whether it be a geographical community? And then study result summaries. Um, Deb Collier, who also spoke yesterday, as you can tell, we have a, a close working relationship within um, several arenas, but mostly within the cancer cooperative groups. Um, we want to know the good, the bad, and the ugly of those things, not just the rosy picture of what this study or what this agent or what this drug is, means to us. So here we have Clint Eastwood, the good, the bad, the ugly and encourage the publication of all results. This has become a real issue of getting these things published. It is our responsibility. It is our duty. It is our, um, uh, can't think of the word, just got the brain drain. It is our um, absolute, um, under the umbrella of ELSI to get that out. Citizen science um, also includes using language that is understandable to our communities. So as a um, member of the CIRB, a lot of the, the um, protocols that I look at, I focus on the informed consent. And it's become, as I've served on this now for almost three years, it's been my heart's desire to really see that we bring this language down to um, a readable level in plain language that anybody that comes to the table who's considering um, participating in a clinical trial, that they can understand that enough to answer reasonable questions about what it is that they may be taking, that they may be participating in. Educate why results are important. We talked a lot about education yesterday. Pearl, I know you mentioned it quite a bit. Um, educate why the research is important, getting the information out there, encouraging um, change when things don't work. We've been operating under the same type of system for a good 25 years, if not longer. And I mean, 25 years ago, now given I, I grew up in a rather rural area, I still have, we still had a party line at our house, a party line. Now we have cell phones. I mean, with all the technology, technology that's changed, with the way that research has changed, with the way everything has changed, um, let's encourage change within, within this community as well. Let's not hunt with the same old dog. Let's encourage new methods and strategies and designs, and let's learn from our mistakes and to make things better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and now our next presenter will be Denise Dillard from the South Central Foundation. 